Hello everyone, my name is Dan and I'm a software engineer at Redgate Software. And I'm here to demonstrate multi-database deployments in Azure pipelines using SQL Change Automation. Here you can see I've got a SQL Change Automation project set up and it has a single migration and it's just a baseline migration. Within this file, you can see that I'm just creating a basic table with a single column and I want to deploy this to several production databases. On the left, you can see I've got four production databases, and these are the four that I'll use for this example to deploy my migrations to. This SQL Change Automation project has been set up with Git, and it has a single commit that I've pushed up to my remote repository hosted on Azure DevOps. So within my Git repo, I've got a separate folder here, and within that are two YAML definitions that I'll be using to set up my pipeline. Within deploy from package.yaml, you can see that I have a single task defined here that is going to be deploying from a NuGet package to a particular database, which is going to be set as variables here, database user, database password, database server. Now, another interesting thing about deploy from package.yaml is that it loops over a set of parameters here. And for each database in this set of parameters, it's going to create a brand new task like so. And it's going to use the particular database as the database name here. And also here to define the display name for the particular step. Within my pipeline.yaml, you can see it's just a simple pipeline setup. It's using a particular virtual machine image and just a date for the name. There are two things that you need to take note of here. That's the task here, which is building the project and creating a NuGet package called database package. And secondly, it's also making use of the template that I defined earlier, deploy from package.yaml. The parameters that are expected within this template are defined below. So these are my four production databases that I want to deploy to. So it can be quite difficult to write out the YAML files manually. Uh, so another option you have is to go to an existing pipeline, such as this one that I have created, and check out your build steps here. And there's an option at the top right to view your YAML. You can copy this and paste it within your YAML files. Okay, so with your YAML files defined here in your repo, you can head over to your pipelines, press create pipeline, and then you can select where your YAML file is hosted. So mine is in the Azure repos Git. Click in the repository that it's hosted at and configuring it from an existing Azure Pipelines YAML file. Clicking on that, you can see that you get the option on the right to select your YAML path. The one I want to select is the pipeline.yaml. And continue. And you can see that it actually pulls the code over here so I can edit it here as well rather than directly in the repo, which is very useful if you want to add more databases. So there's one more thing that we need to get this working. And that is the set of variables that are required as credentials for the databases. Heading back to the YAML file for deploy from package, you can see that the three variables required is the database server, the database user, and the database password. So as you're importing your pipeline, you can head over to the top right, select variables, and for each of those three variables, you can create a new variable here to store the value. With my three variables defined, you can press save. And finally, you can run. And it will create your pipeline for you. So once your pipeline is up and running, you can actually head over to the job here. And you can see that it's populated four different steps for each production database within my array. And it's also doing that first step which I required, which was building the database package. Once that's complete, you can see that for each step, it's used the expected production database for each step. Heading back over to SSMS and refreshing these tables, you can see that each production database has the expected basic table. So what I've demonstrated is the straightforward approach if your databases share the same credentials. Uh, this, this particular method isn't really helpful when databases have separate credentials. Uh, one way to solve that is to head over to settings, service connections, and you can create a new service connection here for each database. 
this may not be viable depending on the number of production databases you have but it is an option service connection you can select SQL change automation target here next and you can select each SQL server instance and database name and the expected authentication method for that database within your deploy from package.yaml you can then make use of those service connections so edit we don't make use of any of these anymore instead we're using the target database connection type of service connection and here is the name of that particular service connection so you could in theory use the database here if you name your service connections correctly which should allow you to use your service connections instead of credentials but that's it for the video and this concludes how to release to multiple databases using SQL change automation in Azure DevOps thanks for watching